When one company purchases another's assets, it would likely prefer to minimize its risk by not assuming or taking responsibility for the predecessor's liabilities. But the predecessor's customers and creditors would likely prefer the successor be accountable, lest they find themselves without a party from whom to recover for the predecessor's misconduct. In Nissan Corporation v. Miller, we explore the successor liability doctrine that balances those competing interests. Frederick Brandt purchased a treadmill from Warren Miller's company, Atlantic Fitness Products. The treadmill was designed and manufactured by American Tredex Corporation. Shortly after Brandt's purchase, Nissan Corporation acquired Tredex's assets. Under the asset purchase agreement, Nissan assumed some of Tredex's liabilities, but not those arising from injuries caused by previously sold products. The agreement also contemplated that Tredex would continue to exist as its own entity for a few years under a new name. Five years after purchasing his treadmill, Brandt suffered a treadmill-related injury, prompting Brandt and his wife to file a products liability suit against Atlantic and Tredex, plus Nissan as Tredex's successor. But Tredex had been dissolved before the suit's filing. And Atlantic alleged that Nissan owed Atlantic indemnity and contribution for whatever Atlantic might have to pay Brandt. Consequently, Nissan was the primary target for recovery. Nissan moved for summary judgment, arguing that successor corporations generally weren't responsible for a predecessor's liabilities. The Brandt's and Atlantic countered that a successor should be responsible for injuries from a predecessor's defective products if the successor continued the predecessor's business operations, which they claimed Nissan did. The trial court held in Nissan's favor, but the Court of Special Appeals reversed. Nissan appealed to the Maryland Court of Appeals, the state's highest court, 